Good, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Um, here again, lots happened, lots transpired and moved along since we were last on here. And it is amazing to me how quickly things surface and how much can happen in such a short amount of time. Um, so really excited to be here, kind of maybe give you guys an update about what we've been up to um, and how things are transforming as we transform. Um, one thing is with women of consciousness and as the consciousness field or enthusiasts or whatever you want to call community comes together, consciousness itself is constantly changing, which is why it's really hard to contain it, right? It's it's not an easy thing to like put under a container and it constantly evolves and transforms and transmutes and mm. transfigures and all the trans stuff. Yeah. So one light sparks another light. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that that's part of it is that we learning how to ride the wave um of that particular structure because it's almost like even though we're riding a wave the wave has a structure mm -hmm. um we're just not moving against the force and so we've changed a couple of things on our website so as you might know our journey started off with the twin flame scenario um and there was a lot of stuff going on with the twin flame um the shadow was surfacing in groups of individuals um the people were talking about, you know, tw twin flame. And for Paminus, this narrative um, we felt was very kind of bastardized by some people in a lot of ways that I don't think people understand the true nature of what the narrative of the twin flame provides. And we had tried to talk about it and stuff. Yeah, clear some of the misconceptions and just mm -hmm. touch on mm -hmm. experience or how it was impacted. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it, it, the way that I'm seeing it now is that the twin flame was there to ignite a part of me that was dormant, not necessarily that I have to be with the person. In fact, I don't ever think I'm going to be with the person. In fact, I don't even know that I, I don't even want it anymore, if that makes sense, because I'm starting to unify within myself and find the harmony within myself and letting emerge what's naturally meant to emerge for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's the beauty of the twin flame scenario. If you can get past the physicality of being with a, an individual, if you can get past that block of, you know, it has to be this person or that person, you know, or I have to be with my twin flame. No, you don't. Like, let's just first say no. <laughs> like, I'm just going to put that out there. Like, I don't even believe that that's why the twin flame existed. I think it it literally, in my personal opinion, again, you know, um, was there to, again, awaken the dormant part that, you know, which was my feminine mm. um, part of my myself as very masculine in energy. Um, and then my feminine was not mature, if you will. It was, it was um, childlike in a way still. It had right. this like childlike quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's where um, I mirror you in the opposites because very much... Mm -hmm in my feminine that was obviously physically wounded energy with this dormant masculine wounded <laughs> that mm -hmm. needed to rise and integrate and right that unity like you said yeah yeah and so what we're realizing now as we move through our own narratives um it's about unity consciousness yeah and so we're as we evolve and move forward we're evolving the company and moving forward and so um we've went from the twin flame scenario which is still very much a part of it right but it the, the goal is unity consciousness within the self so mm -hmm. so there's some changes to the website um if you are really looking to maybe you're trying to heal from that twin flame narrative maybe you're trying to heal from not loving yourself um or um, from a relationship that was toxic or from maybe even the, the addiction of external satis uh, satisfaction. It could be food, could be sexual, it could be whatever your appetite pleases that's on the external to heal from that as well because that's a big part of it too, is learning how to integrate self-love so that we can heal those traumas or addictions that we have on the external. Mm -hmm. 
so I think the unity consciousness um, is where we're headed mm -hmm. um, and perfectly so, um, which I agree, because like if you look at the yin yang, it's it is an integration um, and it's the unity of that integration um, that that occurs that helps us to transcend these old narratives or the traumas even that we're going through. Right. So that's kind of where we're at um, in within the company. And I just want to give a little update. So Pam, what do you, do you have something to say about kind of that? And, you know, I think thinking behind it. Um, no, it feels like a good move for sure. Like we've been just surrendering to this journey and it's been naturally unfolding and it has been this kind of reflection of, um, just our unity right and our mirroring like we are twin flame soulmates as well that's something we've talked about and so we came together in partnership and so it was it was this fire <laughs> of energy because that's what it does right it ignites consciousness um it, this self-awareness and if you know you journey down the path and you're <laughs> not resistant to it it's really truly beautiful and you uncover a lot of growth and healing and a lot of um authentic self you know that was hidden under layers um so i think it's just beautiful that we've been able um to co-create i feel like it's co-creating with this symbol and the cosmos <laughs> the universe consciousness oneness like you know at large um even you being, you know, the earth element of the sun and me having the water sun <laughs> that has, you know, that, that polarity and um, different dynamic has really helped to anchor and ground both world, worlds, right? So it's like <laughs> we're walking on this physical reality. And that was always a challenge for me to understand <laughs> the physical because I've always been like spiritually, you know, somewhere else in the cosmos or fantasy land. And so for me, the, the whole twin flame stuff, I think it really was this young naive girl who, who had so much wounded pain. Um, and so it was about toxic relationships and shedding past that, right? And even I and I even hate to say fairy tales because if you look at fairy tales, they're they're filled with tragedy and pain, um, and they have been transformed through cultures and times. Um, and so, like the Disney version of fairy tales, you know, I think that's what we grow up with in a way now. But if you go beyond that, there's nothing but tragedy, and. Um, for me, it was just trans transforming the narrative beyond toxic tragedies and recognizing I can have harmonious relationships, um, that I don't have to suffer <laughs> in my household because I had children with somebody. And this is what my culture tells me I have to do now. And it was really even just understanding what it truly meant to be human. Um, you know, we talk about the structures and the patterns, and and I knew for you, it, it's the collective. And for me, on that part, it's been like, how is the universe, right? How is it collectively structuring us on this mm -hmm. hero's journey? And, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, these mm -hmm, myths mm -hmm. and these archetype mm -hmm. narratives that we're living symbolically and embodying and playing out. And so that's what I've gotten really good at seeing and sensing. Mm -hmm. And I give mm -hmm. all that credit to this whole twin flame myth. And the reality of that is just, my core essence of my soul or consciousness or you know whatever label you want to try and pinpoint it like that's what split right it just split off and we know consciousness splits and so it's working beyond that attachment of where you find it somewhere else um embodied but knowing right it's about the self and so it all comes back to unity um for mm -hmm. sure yep yep so and yeah, we're just going right. to continue to grow and evolve. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Um, and I think that's, I think that's well put, like your um, seeing, and even what we were talking about earlier, like you're seeing it from the bigger story narrative circulating through the vessel into our personal 
narrative and what we're going through, kind of like, like pulling from that bigger energy into the our 3D, right? Mm. And so it's kind of like, and it, it, it's the back and forth, right? Because if you look at it, it's like we're pulling from these archetypes, these energy fields, and it's structuring us the way we are in this 3D, right? And kind of like the gene keys we were talking about, the gene keys and how, if you haven't got that book, it's a really good book. I highly recommend it. Um, and gene keys, you know, saying like, how do we structure our DNA? What's the shadow? How do we move through that? But then on the other side of that, how do we then recreate the 3D? Right. Because people that are are not going to transcend this particular, you know, space time. I mean, it, we'll, we'll all pass on, right? We're all going to, you know, have a a time where our vessel decays and goes away. Um, the energy field though, that, that kind of transpires from that, where does that go? And that's kind of been the age old question, right? It's like, Oh, well, there's heaven, hell. And you know, there's all these stories about where we go. Right. Um, but also there are stories about like coming back to, and how our energy might come back into this three dimensional time space, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's called reincarnation, right. but it, it's a possibility that, that, that is true. Um, and, and I believe that it's true. Um, but I also believe people replay out this three dimensional time space and there are people who transcend it. And, you know, I think that we keep coming back here over and over and over and over again to play out these narratives to maybe heal past them. Right. And, right. and some people are, some people just like playing in the sandbox. That's kind of, <laughs> some people like playing in the sandbox, you know what I mean? They love it. They're like, I want right. to come back and experience it all over. Right. Some people are like, get me the hell out of here. I was just, what, what did I sign up for? <laughs> um, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, there's a bunch of different narratives that are, that are happening um, and going on. Um, but how do we recreate or leave maybe wisdom behind for the people who want to play in the sandbox and maybe a, maybe design a space or a sandbox that's a little closer to harmonizing with nature itself, mm -hmm. you know, with the essence of nature itself, you know, what that, what does that look like? Um, and how does that information get handed on to the individuals who are in this three dimensional time space like us? We, we were drawn into this world the way it is. Like I didn't design the way the world looks today. I was born into it. Now I might've had some energetic say so or something, who knows if we want to go through the spiritual realm, all that stuff. But the reality is in reality, when I'm here, I was born into this. Mm -hmm. I had no say in how the show, you know, I didn't, right. I, I guess I signed up for it spiritually. Apparently I signed up for it, which I don't believe I did. Right. <laughs> I believe someone hijacked me, put me here, threw me down <laughs> into this place. But the structures and the patterns that were set before us, like that was given to us that we were supposed to be that way. And was that really the right way or the wrong way? Or was it just the way and does it even serve who I want to be? And I'm saying that the most of humanity is saying, hell no, this, this way doesn't serve us anymore. This way is no longer serving the purpose of the collective. People can feel the trap that we're in and, and not really understanding even how to get out of that trap. They're just kind of like, well, this is the way it is, you know, but who created that narrative? Right. How did the collective get to the point where we created this particular narrative that we're trapped in? Because that's really what that's what I feel like. Anyway, I'm, I don't know you listening now, if you all feel trapped in this narrative um, and trying to transcend it. And in America, the narrative is a nine to five. Now, around the world, it's not the same. But, you know, for us, it's like work, 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 work. Yeah. Get two days off. It's the Ford model. You know, we know that that was the model, the Ford model. Right. Nine to five. You know, some people aren't even turning off. They're having to work five jobs. You know, it's just ridiculous oh, yeah. what's going on right now. Oh, um, so overworking overwhelmed people. and overstimulated. And yeah. yeah. And there's no real connection to the animate world. There's no connection to nature. Everything's very inanimate. But did we create this superficial world? We might have had a hand in it going forward, but we dropped into it if that makes sense. Like it was the time period that we, we entered in at our birth. So then how do we transcend that? What, what's next is, I mean, the biggest question, right? It's like, do we go artificial? 
because we're, artificial intelligence is kind of where we're headed, right? Um, and there's artificial everything at this point. Mm. There's artificial flavoring that I even use. So I guess I'm part of that, right? There's artificial flavoring. <laughs> there's Botox. There's artificial um, ways to make you stop aging. And, and that's fine. You know, there's no right, wrong answer to it like it's your journey if you want to get botox cool get botox you want to get a tummy tuck cool you want to get a fake butt cool whatever <laughs> it's your journey right right but but i think people have the option of like moving into in these two directions where it's like the artificial or the natural world right and and i think the people that are wanting to go to the natural world are being made wrong for it and and not being allowed to really connect to that natural state of being and that's a hard thing. Why should that be taken away from us? Right. It shouldn't because that's what we came from. You know, we came from all the minerals and everything that the earth developed and created to make us who we are. That's that's natural for us. Um, but we're heading into this artificial world, which is weird. I mean, it's in the word artificial intelligence. It, it, it's 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 artificial, and then, so everything's going artificial, right? So it's it's that's really way to say fake, you know sounds better people can people can swallow it better <laughs> than make believe or delusional. that's correct that's right that's yeah yeah that's true <laughs> and, and it's weird because that's where kind of the 3d is going yeah. but i also feel that there's a different way that it can go um and i think we may see a kind of a split you know yeah. and, and and how the narrative is going yeah. Um, I think for me, I, 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 it's funny cause I'll, and I don't know if you have this, but I, so I'll look in the mirror and I'll be like, Whoa, when did I get old? You know what I mean? I'm like, where did that wrinkle come from? And I'm freaking out and I'm like, just age gracefully. And so I joke, I'm always like, I'm going to get a tummy tuck and get Botox and I'm not going to do it. But you know, there is this very, it's like enticing you to like, come, come, come this way. Yeah. Um, well, I you mean, know, culturally, and so like culturally, <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody wants we're to be women, Natalie. We're already doomed, okay? Like we're no. doomed the minute we were born. We were born into in the patriarch. I mean, I wasn't born into a matriarchal society, you know. No. Was it, was it no, we were born into a patriarchy that yeah. is based on consumerism and what sells better than beauty products and you know, everything to just make yourself everything you're not. The <laughs> fountain of youth, right? So, yeah. hey, we found the fountain of youth. It's called Botox. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. But it's enticing in a way, you know, and it's a spiritual battle. Like yeah. they're not battling people. The real, real war is spiritual, right? It's like, let's appease that. And I don't, like, again, I don't think it's right, wrong, good or bad, right? It's not to like, oh, let's fear artificial intelligence. I think it's a choice. And um, we can choose to go the artificial way. But where is the natural way and i think that's the big question we're asking yeah. in society where's the natural way the people who right. want to just be natural um and i think we're seeing kind of this both and too so you'll see these people that are embracing the white hair right like that's me i'm like i'm embracing the white hair like am i going to dye my hair i'm not going to you know i want to be natural and i want to enjoy the aging process you know i don't want to be a vampire and live forever that sounds like a curse because <laughs> To some people, it sounds like a blessing. <laughs> to me, it sounds like a curse, you know? Um, and uh, by living forever, I mean on this planet. Um, I want to be able to, you know, move beyond the narrative of this planet or the, the, the trap. So I think with people, I think that's kind of where we're headed. And I think with women of consciousness, that's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. Really trying to figure out how to reconnect with the natural world. Um, and I, and I do believe, and I've been saying this for a long time, I believe the artificial world is reincarnation. I think that's kind of where people go to get reincarnated. <laughs> it's like, we can upload your consciousness into AI, you know what I mean? Then you could just kind of live forever if you want. Um, but so I think there's that is kind of going on. And I think for me, it's, I, I want to, and, and I know for us, right, as what we're doing for women of consciousness to really figure out how to develop these natural spaces for people to enjoy the rest of their life um, without all of the bells and whistles that the, that kind of arose from, from the patriarch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it is like kind of a byproduct. I think of that that particular system. 
Yeah, because how do we live sustainably, right? How do we mm -hmm. live together mm -hmm. in community on property? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, like we were talking about, like we don't want to go to a nursing home and sure you have like retirement villas, right? With golf courses mm -hmm. for the old men and bingo for the ladies, <laughs> um, <laughs> which a lot of people enjoy, you know? But, yeah. but for others of us who envision waking up and you know gardening and breathwork meditation you know like you say kung fu practices you know the, these these mm -hmm. things that are really moving our body moving energy connecting us um you know like that's how i want my retirement to be like i want to be surrounded mm -hmm. by my friends and the people that i absolutely love um all in one space right looking out for each other living off mm -hmm. the land the best that mm -hmm. we can um you know not leaving a carbon footprint as much as we can either um because i feel like all i keep seeing lately is all of the flaws and all of the structures and all of the systems mm -hmm. and all of the disconnection mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like there's no way it, there's no way we're like just burning ourselves out in in these job professions we're burning ourselves out in our family lives because of it because there's no separation um it's just not working and mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the person that's the cog in the wheel anymore. There's no way I've spent too much time healing myself and, you know, breaking free of chains and shackles <laughs> and moving myself, you know? Um, so, so I agree. We have to, we, we have to kind of do what we, what we're getting envisioned, right? What we're seeing mm -hmm. for these creative visions and the heart and the passion that's coming through and it's taking risks and it's healing our own blocks and our own challenges and our own insecurities along the way. And it's paving a path, um, that's new. And I, I don't think it's, um, you know, sometimes there's fads that pop up in culture, right? And I don't mm -hmm. think the whole, you can call it new age movement or the whole retreat or the whole psychedelic, you know, these things aren't really new age, esotericism, <laughs> alchemy. Mm -hmm. it, it's ingrained in the chemistry and the psychology of our soul. It's always going to be at the forefront of leading the path. It's just, are you consciously aware and are you co-creating and navigating the path together? Or are you in ego thinking, <laughs> you, you know, you're really in charge and you matter more than any other life form on the planet. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's just us being true to ourselves. And the more that we're growing and evolving and healing, the more we're, we're seeing bigger visions and we are leaders of that new paradigm. So that's hard in a lot of ways because no one's paved the path for us. <laughs> We're out here trying to be authentic and do it, do it, you know, um, the best that we can. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm grateful at the end of the day. And I know I'm definitely on this path. You know, I, I agree with the consciousness and the split of, of levels, right? People may be staying in certain levels of consciousness, um, but I know like our frequency and our vibration is shifting forward into the unfolding. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is true. And I think so, you know, it, it, there, it's going to be for some people. It's not going to be for some people. And it's fine. Like everybody has this way. It's not right, wrong, good or bad in any direction that an individual goes because it's their journey. But there is this choice that we sh we get to have. And I, I know they're trying to snuff out the choices that we have because one way does lead to liberation of our soul the liberation of, you know, being maybe trapped in a cycle of, of continual 3D comeback. And, you know, and part of it, it's a challenge because it's enticing. Um, but it's not wrong either. Like there are people who, you know, I have friends who are like, they get Botox, they do all the things and that's just what they want to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's and and I think that's part of it, but also, at least allowing a space to do the natural way because it's it's kind of interesting if you see people really trying to do the natural way they're more mad at those individuals and like no we can't control you 
than individuals who are going more toward um, the narrative of trap. I, I just call it like trapping the soul in karma, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or our reincarnation and stuff. Um, because if you look at it, it's not easy just to go get land. You have to, first you have to buy it, then you have to yeah. report, then you have to, it's like, you know, it, the, the systems that we have in place are tr all trying to control you know, that, and, in you know, when we look back at historically that people who were truly connected to the earth, truly connected to, to the medicine of the earth, um, were called witches, were called, you know, they, in it, which is just so, so obviously opposite because we come from the earth, right? Which is just, to me, it's just like, but they've twisted the narrative so much that people believe it. It's, and to me, it's like, but really think about it when you're, when you're walking on you know, the dirt, when you're playing with mud, you know, when you're eating from the earth, when you're eating food that comes from this planet gave this food to us so that we could thrive and survive. And we're using all of, like we're eating organic or, or um, if somebody comes along and says, you don't need any medication, you can just eat a healthy diet. You know, it's like, no, you can't like those people get in trouble and it's just to me is so interesting and it's like and then people really believe that those people are witches or those people are doing evil things i'm like they're connecting to nature itself mm -hmm. i mean are we saying that nature is evil that's what we're saying when we do well, we when we do that that's what i'm saying we're yeah. saying nature is evil and the and it's like aspect of it I, which yeah. I find ironic and funny in a way, because here we are being in the patriarchy, but Pan, right? The the nature god, the masculine nature yeah. god that then became the horned devil, right? Yeah. And then they took the snake symbolism, like we were talking about e earlier with the Kundalini, and like, right, demonized all of it. <laughs> and here we yeah. are <laughs> in these twists. They did. They, they demonized the, the symbols that... Yeah. And it, it, I mean, to me, it's just, it's, it's, it's almost mind boggling how people will buy into it too. And I'm like, it's actually the natural essence or the natural construction of these minerals that have created us. Yeah. So then what are you saying? You're evil? Yeah. Because you come from it. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and we are, we do, we think our nature is naturally evil and not good. And that's not true at all. Well, I mean, that, yeah, we demonize everything realistically that we don't, the things that we fear that are not, that are bad, right? Like demonize. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes back to that biologist. Um, I got to get the guy's name. I, I really liked what he said about humans in general, that we are trying to solve this mystery of why we're so bad and we feel guilty because, you know, if you go back to the, the, the ancient text and stuff, it does talk about like the fall, right? The fall when we ate from the tree of knowledge, depending on what story myth you're following or what religion or whatnot, that there was this fall in humanity where we started to act out. Um, but I like what he said. He said, the issue that we're facing is trying to resolve um, this badness in us this evil in us when in reality we are inherently good and not bad and and if we just remembered that and we stopped focusing on trying to resolve this evil in us that that then we could come back to remembering that we're actually not evil we're good we're good and and you do see that i mean if if, the, if we were inherently evil i think we would have killed everybody off i don't think we would have survived <laughs> we would all there wouldn't we wouldn't be fully populated right i think we're really sexual central beings and we love each other um and this other piece is just us trying to resolve like how did we get to this point um yeah. he talks a lot about science and the mind and how science has kind of taken us down that route um and we're you know when yeah go ahead no, I'm just thinking it'd be great to have like his theory against um, James Hillman's The Bad Seed Theory and like listen to them, like, you know, talk it uh, out. Because well, <laughs> well, I'm curious, and, and, right? You know, How do you counteract, you know, one against the other and say everyone thinks good? And then you have the other one that's like, well, people are just born with this bad, you know, quality. Anything Cain and Abel, like you said, that could go either way. And, Yep. And, yeah, I think, and, and part of me thinks that both are correct because I think that the seed, yeah. kind of like the whatever seed, 
<laughs> well, I think whatever the seed, the seed that came into us that caused the, us to spiral down this path, right? That we're inherently bad was the first seed that was implanted. How that happened, I you know, there's myth stories about it, right? right. Um, when the first human killed another, Cain and Abel, like you talked about, um, or the fall from grace when we ate the apple, whatever myth right. story or religion you're talking about, there's this thing where humanity just went right and did, you know, went oh, against hilarious. nature. <laughs> well, yeah, it just went against nature. Yeah. Like we're trying to fight nature, really. At the end right. of the day, the battle is like, let's fight. We're what well, we want to be above nature or right. it's weird. So, well, in, in literature, era, right? It's man mm -hmm. versus nature, man versus man, or man versus himself. Those are pretty much the three. Like, why is man got to be out there fighting everything? <laughs> why is it man versus? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and then so whatever happened right but inherently like he talks i i think i i talked about this last time he talks about how we're inherently good um and he studied you know primates and i think i had talked about it before but the reality is is that the primates um nurture the the baby the child and that they put all the love into this kid and and although it may be a selfish selfish act on the mother's part to protect the child, um, the the child doesn't view it as selfish. They see it as selfless because they're getting so much attention. But it's selfish from the mother's perspective in that she wants her kin to continue to survive. So her her real reason for nurturing the kid is to make sure that her her offspring survives, right? Mm -hmm. And but it looks like love and nurturing. And so inherently that's what we do. Um have we gotten far away from that? Well, of course, you know, I think, you know, society has sort of narrated this thing about how we are and maybe that's far from who we are. I mean, I think in, inherently when you get to the core of people, they really are good. You know what I mean? They really are wanting the best for their life. You know, I don't, it's rare that you're like, hey, so do you want to have a terrible life? I don't think people are going around saying right. this. I just want to have, everybody's trying to transcend suffering. Nobody's like, hey, let me sit in the suffering. I love it. You know, maybe there might be some out there, but I'm like pretty sure the majority of individuals are like, yeah, I don't want to suffer. Um, you know, so, and I think that we're inherently good. You know, I just think that it's, we've gotten so far from it. So and I think the reason why is because we've stopped connecting to nature in general. I think people typically connect to nature are more in tune with the, the natural essence of the rhythm of the world, right? Um, and so, you know, and it, it's a big thing. So, you know, I think the majority of societies kind of maybe trap in the artificial. Do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. It's almost hard not to be. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, I am trapped there. <laughs> well, you know, we are too. I mean, right here on the podcast, this is, you know, could be considered, you know, kind of, you know, it goes against the laws of nature, nature, you know, well, it could and it couldn't, I guess we can argue both ways, right? Because we can say, well, we're natural and we created it, but, <laughs> but sure, the right. more natural <laughs> way would be face to face, right? And in a right. community of people circling together and being present with one another. Um, so there's beauty in it. That's why there's no right, wrong, good or bad. But I think that they've made it again, they've demonized the more natural way of living. Right. And, and that's, I think to me, that's where the, the root lies. The root issue lies. It's like, let the people that want to live natural, let them do that. Right. Because people don't have survival skills nowadays, you know, no. like electricity, power goes out in a storm. I mean, there's panic on the grocery store shelves. Like, I mean, realistically, how long do you really think shelves will be restocked or, you know, like we've seen enough um, yep. like hurricanes, right? Category five mass crisis. Um, tornadoes you know there's been small moments so and then we fantasize about it because we write about it and create stories and movies and video games where we're living in a dystopia world and you know underground from radiation and like all so you know like we're already well aware of all the catastrophe and mm -hmm. so i don't know it's it's interesting the human like yeah the human it species. is 
Yeah. And it's almost sometimes it's like ignorance is bliss. I mean, I really get that. The more, because the further down the rabbit hole you go, the more you're like, damn, maybe I should just be ignorant. But, but really it's, it's not though. Cause it's like, we're waking up to know ourselves so that we could come back full circle to the fact that we overcomplicated it so much. And it's like, I think a lot of people that are going towards the natural are trying to simplify life. They're not trying to overcomplicate right. it. They realize that the overcomplicated is too much. Right. It's overwhelming. It's stressful. It causes anxiety. Mm. You know, all these structures are overly complicated and complex, mm. you know, and I think it's causing like at the root, like the anxiety and stuff is like, how do we get back to simplicity? And, you know, I know there's a number of people who have talked about like, you know, um, minimize minimalist yeah. and minimizing your, thinking, your like, stuff the decluttering uh -huh. process, right? Mm -hmm. and declutter get rid of stuff you know and and you know and living more of a simple life i mean that's a that's a a step in that that direction i believe right. you know in in, in moving yes. that forward but to really i think embody the essence of of our nature um you know our our loving kind nature um, and, and our connection to harmonizing with the world around us, but to just kind of be in nature right. and, and, and just be with it and co-participate with it, right. you know? And I think that core participation is so gone. It's just, you know, it's like we take, extract and take. Right. And not harmonize, you know, with nature itself. Right. and and learn to integrate you know um it's like we're overtaking you know it's like a bird with the bird's nest they take exactly what they need to make the nest they're not trying to build a mansion nest they're just right. build the nest <laughs> just <laughs> as much as they need <laughs> do you imagine it's like <laughs> look at homie i have <laughs> a mansion <laughs> i'm like <laughs> yeah. i laugh at that too because i think about animals and stuff like that it's like hey you know, I have a bigger nest than you. And it's, could you imagine <laughs> if all of, the, <laughs> you know, I can fit like two families in my nest, you know, I don't know. Just kind of funny. <laughs> right. Um, this, this lake's my lake. You can't have it. <laughs> Go drink on that lake. All right. I heard the crocodiles like, I got a bigger lake than you, bro. Don't right. come to my kingdom. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and maybe there is a battle like that, but you know, with us, it's like, you know, oh, I, I have all this, I have that. It's, it's weird. It's the ownership thing, you know, yeah. um, but I taking and receiving from the, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I think it comes from the whole lack of within, right? That missing spiritual connection element, right? That you are subconsciously not aware of. And so humans fill it with material stuff because that's, you know, the external that we're told will bring us happiness and pleasure. And it does for a minute. And then it's got to be the next, you know, big shiny thing. And that's only fulfilling for so long. And then that continues cycles in itself right there, right? Chasing after this connection that can't be found in objects. And it's only going to be found in stillness and in silence and with yourself out connecting to the world around you. Yeah. And that's really, that's hard. That is, a, that's a hard one for most because there's so much shiny oh, yeah. things going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and it is a slowing down and connecting, but it's hard to slow down too. When, you know, it's like keeping up with the Joneses, right? It's like, and then also I, right now, it's not even that. I think we're beyond the narrative of keeping up with the Joneses. It's like, I can't even keep up with my own life at this point because there's so much, um, hustle bustle for people that you know like again they have to have two three jobs just to survive yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it's like it's going so fast that people can't keep up anymore and i think that's been the big breaking point for most they're just like whoa i can't do this yeah people are looking for a way out um and i think and it's funny too because you know and maybe we can kind of like sum it up with this but if you look at the future like i i try to talk about like the next generation, you know, they see where we're headed. I think they feel it too collectively that they're trying to, they would have to run so much so fast that they have nothing left of themselves, you know, because 
they're going to have to work how many jobs in order to survive where the inflation that's going on and then they they not only do they pick apart part of themselves because at least most people get the weekend to you know figure out who they are they don't even figure out who they are they're just trying to like restore <laughs> that they have zero time to figure out who they are they have zero time to reflect they have zero time to know who they are because there's it's overwhelming they have it, it it's just it's taking them on this journey where it's a breaking point and then people can't keep up so now it's like who cares about the Joneses? <laughs> we don't even know where they're at. <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't even keep up with myself. And, and you know what? I don't even care. I'm done. I'm throwing the towel. <laughs> so, um, That's why everybody's on just social media. Like, <laughs> it's just a, it's a breaking point in humanity, man. And and um, you know, and I, I my heart goes out to to the the next generation. I mean, really, it does. I think people are mad at them, and I'm like, why? This is what we've handed them, you know. After yeah. years of 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 structural, um, and the way we've structured society, you know, we're handing them a not such a good deal. You know what I mean? Right. It's not it's not a deal they're willing to to take. You know, it's almost like the deal with the devil. They're like, I ain't signing my soul over to that. Like, nope you know right you know, people were willing to do the nine to five for a long time in retirement and whatever when there was a rising middle class you know but now people are like wait what did i sign up for yeah, you know this is not don't recall mm -hmm. ever signing up for any of this crap for sure <laughs> like you said earlier when we first started <laughs> out i can remember having a few like conversations or arguments with the universe about okay maybe like consciousness <laughs> decided it wanted this experience but this human ego in this moment <laughs> is saying no i did not partake and ask for this and like it's a lot when you're just here to learn lessons and grow and evolve and you know through challenges and and then we're taking on the shadow collective realm and yeah like it's a lot it's completely a lot and then we're being manipulated and used and drained um by structures that don't care about us but but we're just a resource we're just being pilgrimaged like another freaking resource like the earth and that's it right. and I, right. I don't want to give anything to those structures anymore i have nothing left for you like <laughs> stopped out most people and people are they're tapped out they're exhausted they're tired and that and to me that's why and the big common theme is like so for like those that are on here listening like just give yourself time to relax i don't even if you're like i don't even have time five minutes i don't even care if you're just like if you have kids and you have to just go to the bathroom and just like shut the door and just be with yourself for like mm -hmm. five minutes and it sucks that we're even five minutes probably seems like too like not you know i can't or i can't find the time i mean you know that right there is very very sad you know it's like how much time can you give to yourself like can you give time to yourself mm. and finding those moments to be able to do that right because yeah. you know they're trying i mean to me okay. you know time is the gold that's that's the real gold is our time and and you know they're trying to suck it all up so you know if you can find time for yourself to give to yourself to nurture yourself to sit in the silence to hear your inner voice you know and to start to move um in a, in a direction that's supportive to you i you know give yourself that time you know there's a lot going on so um, but we are here, go on to our website, womenofconsciousness.com. Um, we do provide services. We are doing a goddess circle for those who are interested. Um, and it is on the 17th, yes. that correct? Yes. yes. Um, the 17th. Um, if you're interested, you just go to women of consciousness. Um, actually we have it on Eventbrite. It's, um, the women's, um, uh, Actually, did, we're, we're going to be posting it. I'm sorry. This will make it easier. We're going to be posting it on Facebook. So if you go to our website, you can like us on Facebook. You can like us on Instagram. We're going to be sharing our goddess circle. It's a free event um, to show up. And we're going to be talking about self-care and nutrition. 
Um, I do nutrition coaching and stuff like that. So I'm going to talk about like, what are you nourishing your body with? Um, there'll be some dancing and movement. It's going to be virtual. So it's a virtual goddess circle. So we're really excited to have, we had a really good one last uh, month. We'll be doing these monthly every third, two, uh, third Friday, sorry, of, of the week. And then uh, remind me of the time, Pam. It's uh, Eastern we time. It to 630 to eight Eastern time at night. Eastern time. So um, so if you can make it, that'd be great. Um, you could, again, we'll share the details there. We have an event, right? You can sign up for as well. Um, we'll be posting the link for that event, right? Could sign up, um, to come to the goddess circle. And then you just check out our website, you know, um, and if you feel like you're gelling with us, we'd like you to be part of the community and connect with us. And you, what you have to say is equally important. You know, we just want to, we want to build a community of individuals and that's, that's the main goal of people who are actually ready to like move this narrative forward. So please show up. Um, I'm excited. I'll be starting my first uh, semester of my PhD program coming up soon um, here. And I'm excited about that. Uh, a lot of it will be uh, researching, you know, how do we restructure communities and stuff like that. So pretty excited about that as well. Mm, um, awesome. Yeah. Anything else, Pam, that you have to say or um, you want to add? Not that I can, I mean, just like going back to, I guess, business wise and where we we're talking about, you know, redirecting and where we're at and going. Um, yeah, the goddess circle, that's something we're, we're doing monthly um, to help give back and to help, you know, just other women. Um, that, that was a beautiful meeting, our first one. So we're excited to see that. And then I just think it's going to be what other classes and courses and things that we can um, continue to envision together and create and put out there. So it's all <laughs> it's all the foundation and it's growing. So just, yeah, it's nice to see um, people growing with us, right, for sure. So thank you all for just your understanding and your patience and your support. It's really just, it's really nice to see the beauty in others <laughs> on this page. It is. Yeah, it absolutely is. It is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, come process with us and, and let out some stuff. And we'd like to hear what you think about community as well. That would be awesome. Yeah. So have a great day. We love you. Um, and we will be on here next week as we do these weekly. So awesome. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.